this train was ordered because a different train had too many issues, but it's ended up having issues of its own. If you like train themed content, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. Fun fact about the Netherlands. Despite being smaller in area than 41 out of 50 American states, the country actually has a high-speed railway line. The Hasselzout, which means south, runs from a point just south of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport to the border with Belgium. In Belgium, the high-speed line continues to Antwerp. Within the Netherlands, trains run on conventional tracks briefly through the city of Rotterdam, and there is a connection in both directions to the city of Breda as well. The Hasselzout opened in 2009 and today has a line speed of 300 km per hour. Since its inception, it's been what we call an Hofbeindossier in Dutch. Literally translated, that means a headache case. It was built in six years, from 2000 to 2006, and it opened in 2009, two years behind schedule. It cost 7.2 billion euros to build, but you know what? Those really aren't terrible numbers if you look at railway projects around the world. The real issue were the trains. Today, the least trains between Amsterdam and Paris use the Hasselzout running at 300 km per hour. Eurostar service was introduced in 2018, and there are now several trips a day between Amsterdam and London, also running at that top speed. However, Dutch national operator NS wanted to run their own services on the line as well. And so the plan for the Fira was born. Fira is the Swedish word for the number four, and of course it makes a lot of sense to name a Dutch train after a Swedish word. The Fira was supposed to run from Amsterdam to Brussels, via Rotterdam and Antwerp, hence the four. It would run at 250 km per hour and replace the slower intercity service between the two capitals, which had been running over the conventional tracks for decades. The new trains were these so-called albatrosses, officially known as the V250. They were built by Italian company Onsoldo Breda. I don't know what you know about Onsoldo Breda, but they basically went down in flames because of several bad high-speed trains. There were the Danish intercity sets, which performed so bad that the Danish railways are trying to get rid of them super early. Interesting side note on these, one of these was stolen from the factory in Italy and smuggled to Libya for dictator Gaddafi. But the Fira V250 was the nail in the coffin. In anticipation of the new trains, NS began a temporary service using leased Trax locomotives and refurbished ICR cars. From 2009, these ran between Amsterdam and Rotterdam at a speed of 160 km per hour. In 2011, service was extended to Breda. The first V250 sets ran trial runs with passengers on board in July 2012, and on December 9, 2012, they officially replaced the old International Intercity with a new high-speed service. However, large delays and cancellations were an everyday occurrence. There were software issues, but also physical damage caused by cold weather. Then, after only 40 days, a metal sheet flew off the bottom of one of these trains while it was traveling at high speed. The Belgians immediately barred these sets from entering their country, and so NS was forced to suspend service. On January 19th, NS announced they were postponing the delivery of the rest of the sets. Ansaldo Breda claimed that they could fix the host of issues in a matter of days. They couldn't. In May 2013, the Belgians pulled out of the FIRA program altogether. NS wanted to do the same. So with the V250 officially gone, NS had to promise to come with an alternative. They brought back the locomotive hauled FIRA services between Amsterdam and Breda. The old conventional intercity was given a new life as well. At first between The Hague and Brussels, and in 2015 back up to Amsterdam again. This train was significantly slower than it had been before the debacle. Of course, the name Fira now carried negative connotations, so a new name was unveiled in December 2013, Intercity Direct. NS began to focus on a new goal, integration with the rest of the national rail network. The Intercity Direct trains received a new paint scheme. 
the classic yellow and blue seen on their regular trains rather than the candy cane look that had previously set them apart. This change gave us one of my favorite locomotive liveries ever. In January 2017, NS added a new service to the southern section of the Hasselzout, an intercity running between The Hague and Eindhoven. This service replaced an existing intercity using the high speed line just between Rotterdam and Breda, basically screwing over the city of Dordrecht. Finally, in 2017, a big step was realized when the intercity to Brussels was also rerouted to the high speed line, bypassing The Hague but stopping in Breda instead. Now there are five trains per hour on every segment of the Hasselzout, and that's not including Talisa and Eurostar services. That's an amazing frequency for a high speed line in Europe. However, the biggest development post Fira happened the year before, when NS announced that Alstom had won a contract to build its new intercity fleet. These new trains were going to be branded the astonishingly original name of Intercity New Generation, which of course will never become outdated or confusing. They would be capable of running at speeds of up to 200 km per hour and would run both on the high speed line and for longer distances on the conventional network. NS's main requirement was that it had to be a reliable platform from a well-known manufacturer. You actually see this in all the trains they ordered since the Fira, like the new Flirt or SNG trains. Later, 20 extra sets were ordered for service to Belgium. Interestingly, these sets will receive the brand new NS Flow livery, while the domestic sets will have the older NS Intercity livery and I believe there will be a few prototypes for service to Germany as well. Here is an ICNG set running a test run in the Dutch city of Amersfoort in November 2022. Jeez, what a terrible noise those trains make. The Intercity and Intercity Direct services currently run by local haul trains will all be replaced by these two orders of ICNG. And that's a good thing too, because the old trains are terrible. Don't get me wrong, the service is pretty good. Even if they do bypass the prettiest city in the country, Intercity Direct trains offer a 25 minute trip from Rotterdam to Schiphol, which can otherwise take 45 minutes to an hour but they've caused a lot of problems too. For one, the Hasselzout is unnecessarily complicated from a technical perspective. At different points along the line, drivers have to manually switch between multiple voltage systems as well as train control systems, all within the span of a few minutes. Sometimes the trains just give up and strand in the middle of a major international high-speed line. Even worse was the discovery that the trains were damaging the rails of the line, you see, a locomotive is heavy, much heavier than a train set, where the weight is distributed. Inner city direct trains always have two locomotives, and the trains are only running at 160 km per hour, which is practically half of the line's design speed. As a result, the weight was bending the rails out of shape. In 2021 alone, the Dutch government had to pay 50 million euros to fix this. So the ICNG trains will definitely be an upgrade. They'll be lighter and travel at 200 km per hour rather than 160. But let's think about it. We were supposed to have 250 km per hour trains in 2013. It's 2023 and we're just now seeing trains capable of 200 km per hour. What's more, these trains should have been in service a long time ago already. The initial projection was 2021. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, there were already signs that it might be later. And then the pandemic messed everything up, of course. Parts for these trains come from all over the world, and in many cases, factories were shut down. What also didn't help was that one ICNG derailed in Germany when it was on its way to be delivered to the Netherlands. On December 30th, 2022, however, we received a bit of good news. The Dutch government had approved the ICNG for service in the Netherlands. 
NS announced that their new target date would be late spring 2023. That means sometime in April, May, or June at the earliest. While this is more likely than previous estimates they've given, I still won't hold my breath. Especially now that there are reports that most of the sets have returned to the factory for inspection. It seems they found some loose metalwork on one of the trains, and if there's one thing we've learned from the FIRA, it's loose metal bad. <sighs> I just want new trains. NS is planning to extend intercity direct service northwards towards Groningen and Leeuwarden. At the same time, the train to Brussels will skip several stops like Breda, speeding the train up. The Belgian railways are planning to add their own service to Rotterdam to stop at these stops that would otherwise lose their international connection. So ICNG will be an improvement. I mean, parts aren't flying off these trains, and there will actually come a day when we can sit down and ride in one of these. They're even going to significantly speed up travel between Brussels and Amsterdam. But sometimes I can't help but feel like it's a poor band-aid solution. There should have been something much better, going much faster, and it should have been there much sooner. Of course, it takes a while to sort things out and get back on your feet after a disaster like the FIRA. But this just doesn't seem all that modern or special, especially when you look at what's running in other European countries. I'm not going to be hysterical and say that the ICNG is just another FIRA. Who knows, maybe someday it will end up being one of the most reliable trains the Netherlands has ever seen. We shall wait and see. One thing is for certain though, they are by far the shriekiest.